Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the sauce number 103-IT. This is a uh, this is a template for a sauce hinge, is what this is. This first part of the video is just going to serve as some visual evidence of what this is. Um, you know, I used to think that this is was poplar, but it's not. This is this might be alder. Is what this? It's a hardwood species of lumber. Is what this is. I believe it's alder. So this is a basically a piece of wood that's been prepped and machined and is used to allow you to get that 103 routed or mortised into the door. Overall length of the template about 12 inch. Overall width of the template about three inch. It's thickness. I'm sure it's one by material. Yeah, so a little thin on that, but five eighths. Probably started out as three quarter lumber and they planed it down nice. So what would you use this for? Why would you spend any money for this? Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, why would you use one of these templates? Well, sauce manufacturers really cool hinges. They have and have had for several decades a line of concealed hinges. When the door is closed, you don't see the hinges all the hinge whatsoever. Um, sauce hinges are known to be extremely robust, dependable, reliable. They're known to carry very heavy weights. It's not like a butt hinge where, well, I could probably hang that 200 pound door on that regular hinge. You probably can. Um, it's you know long term, it's not a great idea because it will fatigue and fail. Then there are some butt hinge manufacturers who have a table uh, that shows you, well, if you're going to hang a 225 pound door, it should be this weight, this width, uh, pardon me, this height, depending on the volume. Sauce is um, somewhat unique in the sense that their outline of what hinge you need based on the width and the weight of the door is clearly published. That's not so much the case with other manufacturers. Other manufacturers will tell you a door up to this weight or in this range of low, medium, or high volume use, use this hinge. Well, um, you know, we've not calculated in the weight of the width of the door at all. Um, and other sort of config, uh, considerations that might need to go into determining a hinge. Um, with a butt hinge, they're less elegant because of where that vertical axis of pivoting is moved off of the center of the thickness of the door. So very heavy doors are not as well hung on butt hinges just because of that fact. Pivots are better at doing it for weight, most definitely. Pivots are better, but pivots can have some side, uh, uh, some, some obstacles that can prove to be side effects to accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Some people don't want to bury something into the floor for an exceptionally heavy door, or they might want it concealed, which means it needs to be center hung, and therefore the door has to be radiused or rounded over. Well, with Sauce, um, they have published guidelines right up front that says, if your door is this wide and this heavy, here's, how, here's the hinge you use and here's how many you use. They don't only have that for their standard hinges, but they have it for their Hercules hinges as well. The di there are two documents, and they're called nomographs. One's for the standard line, 103, 218, whatever the hinge part number is. And then they have their nomograph for the Hercules series. And you are going to get into a few hundred pounds with the standard stuff, and you're going to get well north. You'll get to 1,000 pounds with the Hercules line. The point being is why sauce, well, because it can very elegantly in a concealed fashion carry a very heavy door. And people use them not only for doors, but for bookcases as well, uh, or unusual applications where it needs to be concealed. There's one drawback, really, of sauce, one drawback only, and that it's E-dimension. The maximum dimension that the hinge can exist as measured from the pull side of the, of the door cannot be exceeded or the door won't open. So you'll have applications where you've got an inch and three quarter thick door, you have, uh, it's a 200 pound door and you're gonna use some 218s, that's all great. 
but you know that the door is actually going to be two and a half inch thick because they're applying a fabric panel to the door. A sauce hinge is not going to work when you're a plot when that panel is on the pull side of the door because that three-quarter thickness of this panel or whatever it is exceeds that e-dimension so that's the one downside of it but when you don't have a wall condition or an applied trim condition that you have to get around um, sauce could work great and the reason it's limited is because of where the vertical axis of pivoting is it starts down you know inside of the thickness of the door and as you open the door that vertical axis of pivoting travels a bit with it, but it never gets off the face of the door ever, um, which would be a limitation if you're trying to swing the door out and around some trim or some casework or the door is inset and you need to have a offset vertical axis of pivoting to get the door, the door swung out and around, whatever that case is. Sauce and other hinges like it, whether it be made by Tectus or Sugatsuni or McKinney, there's somebody else who makes the same type of category of hinge. They're all limited by that reality. Um, but with the exception of that limitation, sauce is a great hinge to use. And in 30 years, there's been one time, about a year ago, a client called and says, yeah, that sauce hinge is defective. I didn't sell them the hinge. They had been on the job for 10 years. I said defective. I've never, not one time has anyone ever said that to me, that the door is defective, the hinge is defective. I says, what was it used on? He says, oh, it was a bookcase. And it may have been a, a 210 is the hinge part number. I forget. And then he came in with the hinge, and the hinge was literally bent like this. And I, I looked at it. I says, I've never seen that on a sauce hinge. I says, were they doing chin-ups on the top of the door? He says, no, it's a bookcase. The two children climbed and sat on top of the bookcase. So the hinge wasn't defective. He was being um, funny about it. Um, turns out that the hinge really held way past what it ought to have held before it even bent. Replace the hinge and the bookcase works perfectly again. Now, when it comes to mortising for sauce hinges, it's simple and straightforward. It really is. It is when you're mortising for something, it's, think of layers. You've got this deep layer, you've got this next layer that's not as deep, and then you have a top layer. That's three layers. Rarely do you get past two layers or two different treatments. You've got to do the body and then you've got to do the plate. A butt hinge is just mortising one layer deep. Four and a half inch, 134 thousandths, inch and a half deep if you've got an inch and three quarter door with a quarter inch back set. That's one layer. Think of a roller latch. That's got two layers. It's got the body of the roller latch and then it's got the three and three eighths long plate that you'll then, that's layer one that you'll mortise. Well, sauce hinges are a two layer application where you've got to do the body, you've got to mortise for the body, and then you've got to mortise for the plate. The template allows you to do that in an elegant way in that these inserted roll pins, when you nail it out, when you push it on the door and you nail this down to the template, nails are included, you will not violate the E dimension, that maximum dimension, because that is going to act as, the roll pin will act as the stop against the door. You can't violate, you can't get past that, meaning you can't install the hinge greater than its E dimension, and the E dimension is a reference to the template of the hinge, which I'll show you. It also has these two, basically, they're drywall screws. When you nail this to the door, you'll do your body prep between the drywall screws. You'll pull the screws out, you'll change the depth, and then you'll do the plate prep. It gives you an extremely clean, accurate prep. This is a flip-out tab. I'd probably have to loosen that screw a little bit. You'll, you will rotate that out and then hook it on the top of the door when you're doing the door work. You'll bring it back up like it is now and then butt it to the underside of the header when you're doing the framework. That is exactly the gap. The thickness of that is the gap that you need, about an eighth of an inch. It looks a little shy on that from the underside of the header to the top of the door. So automatically gives you that. And it's just a piece of wood. That's all it is. A couple of roll pins, a couple of drywall screws, a couple of trim head nails. Okay. Um, the one downside of all of this, in my opinion, and I've spent years in a, in a metal shop and a wood shop. I've 
done basically every prep, whether it be wood or metal, um, is that I would I would tell I will tell you that the dura the long term durability of this is such that you're not going to get hundreds of doors out of this. As you run the router through here, you're going to affect the pr the actual size of this prep. You're going to take those screws in and out countless times. That's going to wear and tear. That's just an inserted roll pin. You'll run the risk of lifting your tool out and then nicking the template itself. That's going to ruin the template permanently. So getting thousands of doors out of this, that's not going to happen. But they're inexpensive enough that when it wears down, you're good to go. You could also get real fancy and make your own. If you wanted something made of more durable base material, if you were a metal worker, I could envision ways just off the top of my head how I might go about doing that. Um, I've never seen an example of someone making their own sauce template, um, with the exception of me. Um, I, I needed to do a job. The first time I had ever done sauce, I made my own template, and basically all I did was, knowing what it needed to look like, I just copied uh, the sauce template. I just had one by lumber, and I ripped it, and I prepped it, and there was not much to really say about that. Um, I don't remember how I did the body only. I know I didn't do drywall screws like this. I don't recall what I did, but um, forever after doing sauce preps after that was done on a CNC machine. So the first time I did it was pre-owning a CNC machine. After that, every time it was a CNC machine, once it's programmed, it's done. You know, nothing to really think about. Okay. Um, if you're, this client ordered one template. Well, they've got more than one hinge to mortise. There's no doubt. If you have a small project, you're doing one door, one frame, a half a dozen. Maybe buy one template and maybe not the entire kit. You can buy this as a kit where you string these along and they're assembled and you take the entire kit and put it down onto the door and you do all your body preps at one time. You put all your screws in, you do all your plate preps at one time. Take the entire kit, transfer it to the frame, nail it in place, do all your plate, uh, your body preps. I like to do the deeper preps first. So that in the event that I damage something, I've got the plate prep to do at the end that I can clean that off, hopefully. Um, so it's relatively easy, but uh, but you're not going to, you know, what I'm trying to say is if you buy the entire kit, you can do it faster. Buying one template tells me the guy's probably, the client's probably has one door to do, and they're just going to nail it on, route it, nail it on, remove it, nail it on, do that three times, four times, then to the frame, three or four times. Um, but if you're doing any sort of production, you'll want to uh, get the entire kit, uh, which they have. Now, for use with Sauce Invisible 103 only, this actual size is only for that hinge, meaning only the 103 is the size of the 103. The next hinge, smaller and bigger, is a different part number. It's a different size. Very important, when whatever routing or mortising that you're doing, is the language that's on here. I'll read it and then we'll talk about it. The router guide template has been designed to work only with the Porter Cable Template Guide 42024 and the 42237 lock nut to assure the following guide bushing dimensions. Okay, it has to be this size. So If you think about a router and a two flute, rob, uh, two, flute, two flute carbide router bit sticking out of the bottom of it, you're going to put that onto the door, but what? how in the heck are you going to control that? Well, through the base, you're going to have the guide, and that guide's going to be held on with a lock nut. Now you can take that template, that pardon me, now you can take that router and place it into something and bump into the edges because the router guide is there. And they're saying you have to use that, that part number router guide because... The size of the prep required, plus the si half of the di plus the radius of the router guide, will equal the width of the prep here. That, that math doesn't add up, but the let's do it this way: the size of the prep that is needed for the hinge, knowing that you've got the router guide installed, and it is going to be wider than what you need because the router bit needs to come through that. The router bit will be smaller than the diameter of the router guide. 
is going to be directly related to the overall size of the prep. So if you were to take a 103 hinge and put it in here, it'll fall right through because this needs to be larger than the hinge because you have to use a router guide. The point is, is you must use that router guide. We can sell you the router guide. We can sell you what you need for your router along with now the other variable that's not mentioned on here is the diameter of the bit must be the right diameter. If the bit is too large, your prep is going to be too large. If your bit is too small, the prep is going to be too small. Okay. So that is an important aspect to this. So if you're buying this template guide, you have to have the router guide, the thing that you thread to the bottom of your router, and you've got to have the right diameter router bit as well. Um, they don't mention that on here, and they should. They should put on here, you must use a, dia a you know, a 3 8 diameter router bit or whatever, whatever is required. So let's switch to the screen view, and let's talk a little bit more about the details of this hinge. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here's the template that we are looking at. Let's take a look at some photographs. There's the label, contents of the box, the template itself, that warning label, the prep itself. That's the tab on the top for gauging to the underside of the header or hooking to the top of the door. It looks like it's National Manufacturer National Manufacturing's logo that's on there. They are a, um, a manufacturer of, for many decades, they make a lot of steel products. They obviously make this little doodad that Sauce uses. It's a hardwood specie lumber, alder, probably beech, maybe basswood, but I don't believe it's poplar. I used to think it's poplar, but I, it's, it's not. Alder, beech, or basswood, it's one of those. You could get yourself fancy and and uh, you know put a put a clear coat on that to at least give yourself some initial protection. I don't think that would bother anything. That's showing those two drywall screws that you'll drive out. And the two nails. That's the pin. There's one obviously at each end of the door. Um, okay, let's take a look now at the extended description. Sauce invisible hinges can be installed easier and faster than ever before. Each router template is individually handcrafted for exactness. Okay, I've never heard of one of these not doing the job. It, the template is held on the door with nails. Guide pins locate the deep mortise. The drywall screws are the guide pins. And that's, you know, basically what I would call it as well. Um, you know, you've got your, your body. I called it the body. They're calling it the deep mortise. Um, the edges of this template assure a perfect outline when used with the Sauce RGB100 template guide and the lock nut or the porter cable. That's what they're giving us there on the label that's actually on the template. And perfect outline. That's accomplished, of course, by that. Um, probably CNC prepped size uh, in the t in the template itself. Uh, this is a video from Sauce. I I don't know how many years old that is or decades. You do need a three eighths router bit for doing this. Um, there's a link to it here. There's a link to the router guide and bushing nut there as well. Now this E dimension I had been talking about. Let's take a look at. the Sauce 103 hinge, because I'm going to pull up the template, sorry. So a 103 is a relatively small hinge, but here's the template. And this is the E dimension. The door to where the prep for the hinge starts. And right here on the 103, it's 1 eighth of an inch. That is the E dimension from here to here. If you go, if you mortise it greater than an eighth of an inch, your door may not open. That's an eighth of an inch right there. 
the roll pins or the stop pins in here don't permit you to exceed that dimension is is the point um, okay let's pull up our template again to look at the documentation that we have there so what we have here is a cut sheet that cut sheet is an excerpt out of the catalog that's going to show you the different hinge models that they have templates for and here are the listings for those 103 is pretty small this is an overview of the entire system I would recommend reading it that's what a somewhat pixelated picture of the entire project looks like this is what the entire kit looks like even though they've redesigned the kit it still does look somewhat like this you'll notice that there are two biased towards the top of the door that's standard for sauce I had a client very recently call and say he didn't get enough parts this channel here I think it's an angle that connects the second from the top to lower hinges there was only one of those and the client thought there should be two because this connecting piece here is different and he was clearly thinking and what was interesting this client was in the United Kingdom and their European stuff is biased towards the top um, he was thinking that that hinge should be down in the middle as we do it here in the United States um, but no bias towards the top that's why that router guide system will be like that the router bits are listed here you have to use the right size I had a client call one time and say uh, he bought the guide he bought the bit he bought the entire template kit and the hinges and he calls and says I can get the hinge in but it's just really really tight and I said what and, and knowing what would cause that meaning the router bit that was sent was too small we went back and looked at the order and I looked at every line item and the diameter of the bit the uh, the guide for the router base was correct and then I asked him to send me a picture of the router bit I says I think you've got the wrong router bit and he did and he measured it and sure enough it was a 3 8 router bit that he had received because he was doing 2 18s or 2 16s and you need a half inch for that and I knew that because the router bit looked like this solid carbide unit and not a two flute like this and I knew that he got the wrong router bit so sauce was able to quickly get a get the correct bit moving he was just rerouted everything he stopped the project didn't continue when he tried the first hinge uh, but that's a telltale sign what makes this important is the outside dimension obviously really important the size of the preparation in the in the template again is meant for that is meant is is based on that the installation instructions are with the unit um, I feel like I've explained it uh, to the point where I won't go through this step by step this is the set of installations that you installation instructions you would get when you bought the entire kit um, it is included when you buy the individual templates this is a side view of what your prep looks like this is the body prep down here you pull the two pins out then you'll do the plate prep they say that's your first mortise I've always done it backwards I like to do the real deep mortise first um, one out of a hundred doors I'm really glad I haven't prepped that face plate yet because then I can clean something up um, it is just a simple matter of locating it on the door doing one preparation locating it nailing it to the door doing one preparation either putting in or taking out the guide pins doing the other preparation and then putting the guide pins back in and then carefully pulling it off the door without bending the nails or damaging the template um, again if you're doing it on the door hook that tab over if you're doing it on the jam you'll use that as a 
spacer underneath as you tuck it to the underside of the header is what you're doing there. I won't read the template, inst uh, the template instructions. I just don't think it's necessary. I would suggest that you do so as casual reading, but I've given you the overview of how you would end up using this. Um, I do have a video of the entire kit where I go through this line by line. Um, might be more information than is necessary because at a certain point this does become somewhat self-explanatory. A lot of people I think are intimidated by sauce. Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. And I think the reason is because it looks so mystical, this articulating odd hinge and how it moves and etc. Um, the template, there's lots of dimensions, lots of drawings and things to confuse. You know, all I can say is do it one time and then you'll be an expert. Um, I like the sauce hinge a lot because of what it's capable of in terms of being concealed. Therefore, it's elegant and carrying a very heavy weight. We hung a 3070 16 gauge hollow metal door with three quarter granite applied to the push side of that door. Um, I don't know what granite weighs per square foot when it's three quarter thick. I know that that door was 190 pounds. Um, for 218 hinges is what I used. Just perfect. I mean, butt hinges are not going to swing that door. The client has an existing frame. Uh, pardon me, it was an existing frame. The client um, had to have concealed hinges, therefore couldn't do an offset pivot. He had to hide the stuff because um, that was the look they were going for. And, you know, the sauce hinge worked perfectly. Other people make concealed hinges and they're adjustable. I had mentioned them earlier. Tectus is the name lots of people know. Um, I've reviewed many of their hinges. I've sold them many times. We did a project, uh, a mass transit installation in the city of Qatar, the, in the Middle East, uh, pardon me, in Doha, uh, in the country of Qatar. A substantial quantity of concealed hinges that were type 316 stainless, uh, concealed and three-way adjustable. Sauce has said they will never make an adjustable concealed hinge. They're never going to do it. They don't believe in it. Um, and that's why I think people don't get into Sauce because they're really nervous about getting it right the first time because there is no tolerance with these hinges. You have to mortise it, the correct center line on the jam and the correct center line on the door. There's no opportunity to get that wrong. I understand why that would make people nervous. I don't make a living as a carpenter. Um, I have done a lot of woodworking, uh, a lot of door, really woodworking in the sense as, as it applies to the wood door industry. Wood doors, metal doors, wood frames, steel frames. And that intimidation level goes away immediately. <clears throat> as long as you can measure and find that center line, don't violate the E dimension, you will find 100% success. This just is a two-step process <clears throat> rather than a quick butt hinge. If you're routing for, a, for pivot hardware, um, the top pivot is a two-step machine, a two-layer prep as well. You've got the spindle that has to go down into the door and then you've got to do the plate. The bottom of the door is generally just a single rectangular preparation. Um, but when you consider the advantages, the ability to hold lots of weight, the fact that it's concealed, you say to yourself, well, gosh, I think I might be interested in learning how to prep for that hinge. And then the people like, uh, some carpenters like the adjustable hinge. And the only thing I've heard people say when I've asked them to justify why they like that adjust that three-way adjustable hinge um, is because, well, if I'm off a little bit, Okay, first of all, you shouldn't be off at all. Um, obviously, you're, you're striving to not be off at all when you're mortising hardware. Second, those three-way adjustable hinges are substantially more expensive than sauce, three times the cost. And I think to myself, the fact that sauce is not adjustable means that my hinge is never going to come out of uh, alignment because of wearing parts. That's, that those pieces those pieces of steel plates with nylon friction, low friction 
spacers is going to give me a lifetime of dependable uh, sort of operation. Having mechanical control over three-way adjustability, I'm concerned with. And I asked a carpenter who swears by them, hey, you know, 10 years later, have you ever had any problems with that hinge keeping the door in position? He says, absolutely not. 15 years later, no problem. Okay, well, I have to take that at face value, no problem. But anything that can be mechanically adjusted is going to need to be adjusted mechanically, in my opinion. There's no opportunity to have to adjust anything with a sauce hinge. And as a result of that, I don't see a reason to reinvent the wheel. That's my take on sauce. Really nice quality people over at sauce. They're responsive. They're great. They have tremendous bedside manner. Easy to check stock. The whole nine yards. Um, but the holy grail of sauce for me is getting a an AutoCAD file right, where I can articulate or rotate the door around sauce's floating vertical axis of pivoting. Um, it doesn't exist that I'm aware of, but we will keep hunting. We will keep hunting for that white whale. Any questions on the 103 IT or any other sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.